Amen. Hallelujah. Today we are going to continue with our Christmas sermon. And uh, today I'm going to finish part four. I didn't know like it's going to be like up to part number four. But it, somehow, some way, every time I preach, I get more sermon on my topic. So, but today is the end. Amen. Let's stand up on our feet and read uh, the book of Micah. Uh, Micah is uh, Micah chapter 5, verse number 2. And it goes like this. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of, out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be the ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from the of old, from everlasting. Let me read again. But thou, Bethlehem, Ephrata, thou you are little among the thousand of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me, the one to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth are from old, from ever. Lasting. Lord, I thank you for this simple message that Father Prophet Micah prophesied 800 years before the birth of Jesus Christ, talking about this geographical location, the city of Ephraim. And I thank you, Jehovah God, because you are a faithful God. And I pray today that Jehovah God, you will minister to us in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say it, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So the title of my message this morning, the title of my message this morning, Mentorship Part 4, No Detours, Straight and Fast. Amen. No what? Detours. You see some people here drive trucks and you have a GPS and you're just going to say, the Lord ahead is closed. So what do you do? You take a detour. And what does that mean? It adds into a time. If you are supposed to make it in two hours, then all the two are just helping you, but at the end of the day, you get there late. Pray the name of Jesus. So I want to minister to you this morning. The first message was, have, have you found your Elizabeth? And then we came, the second one was, uh, how to find Elizabeth? And I want to recap something from last week's message, and then I'll connect this, it will be very brief. But last week, from last week, we saw about few points. Uh, we talked about how to find your Elizabeth. You see, when the angels came to those people, the shepherd, he said, you go to Bethlehem, and when you get there, hallelujah, the king of kings, last week we read the prophet by Isaiah that was given 500 years before Jesus was born. And to us, the child is born. Amen. We say that he'll be called Emmanuel, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. Now, this prince of peace, the shepherd, 500 years later, they are told, go, you will find the king of kings, the lord of lords, the almighty God. And where will you find him? He said, you find a sign. This is a sign we shall find a baby wrapped in a cloth. Pray the name of Jesus. And this is what we said. Most of the time, people found a Messiah who can give them food. They find a Messiah who can heal. You see, everything that God has put in you, every dream, it will come in the form of a sign. Pray the name of Jesus. It will come in the form of what? Of sign. So you must be careful. Point number one was this. Uh, pay attention to signs. Kingdom treasures are hidden. Hallelujah. Most of the time we miss God because we are looking for Ready-made stuff. And God give us raw materials. Hallelujah. The people of Israel, they missed Messiah because they were waiting for Messiah to come with chariot and say, hey, this is the anointed man of God. This is the anointed Jesus. But he came in a manger from the, uh, praise the name of Jesus. Point number two. We talked about 
They followed the star, but we follow the Holy Spirit. Now from that place where the, the, uh, the angels appeared to them and the, you shall find a, a, a sign, Jesus is born in the manger. From that place to Bethlehem, they didn't just go all over the place. They followed what? Tell your friend to follow a star. Now the, follow, the, the stars are not visible during the day. So the stars are visible during the... Tell your friend, be ready for inconveniences. You know, there's some people who like church with coffee. You just go to church when you wake up and you feel so good. Amen? You feel like, yeah, today I am so energetic. You know, it's a struggle. When other people were sleeping, they were following what? Pray the name of Jesus. They were following the... And I want to encourage you. They followed the star. We follow the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, you'll be knocking in every barn. Hey, do you have any woman here who gave birth to a child? What are you talking about? Get out of here. You go to the next one. Hey, uh, I am looking for... But these people, they went. They followed the star. And the star traveled. When it stopped, they... And all of a sudden, I mean, one day it came to this city of Bethlehem. And it stood... And here was the baby wrapped in the saddle cloth. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Pray the name of Jesus. But last Sunday I talked something and the whole week I've been thinking about this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Peace be still. Amen. Peace be still up down there. So uh, the, the, the thing is they, they followed Jesus. They followed the, the, the star until to that place and they saw Christ and they worshipped him. Now, the third thing I talked about, what I want to just demonstrate a little bit here before I preach for today's message. Just as we have Elizabeth out there, there is also Herod spirit at work. Be where? Herod was the king. When he heard that somebody else was born a king, the Bible says he was troubled. Say troubled. And the whole Jerusalem was tra troubled together with, with him. So what happened is like, hey, I have been the king, you know, I've lowered taxes for you, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this. Now the problem here is another king is born. So everybody is almost sick. What happened? Oh, the king is born, there's another king, now we're gonna lose. You know, I don't know if Herod was a, a Democrat or Republican, but if he was a Democrat, all oh, Democrats were hey, you know, there's another Republican who is about to take charge. So, you know what, we're going to lose all the jobs. So, they were all troubled. And I said that there's something called the Herod spirit. He said, you go there, when you see the child, come back and let me know. So that I can also go and worship. But was that the truth? No. He wanted to go and kill the because he was about to take his place. And the Herod spirit is the spirit whereby somebody feels like if this person is blessed, then I will not be blessed. If this person gets up there, then I don't have anything. You know, we want to be in control. And I want to just demonstrate this very quick. Amen. Can I have four volunteers here? Four volunteers. <coughs> I saw some people have a lot of energy in this place. So you come. All right, energy. You imagine I'm preaching and you have a lot of energy. Come, let's preach together. Okay? Three more people. We nominated Barimona to come and be one of them. Please come. Praise Jesus. So I want you to grab, I want you to grab this flask. Amen? So, each one of them here is holding what? A vessel. Can you lift them up like this? People can see. I hope you will zoom this and give it. And they are, all of them, they are empty, okay? Let's describe these vessels. Size-wise, are they equal? Shape-wise. But all of them are vessels. When we are saved, God calls us. When we respond, we become empty jars. And what Jesus does, he puts some Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God comes in here. So put like some water there.
Praise God. Let's just see. Maybe we can just do something different here. Let's do this. That's enough. Are you filled enough? Oh, it was a good. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And how about you? So each one of them now had the spirit of God. Amen. The Bible said when we receive Christ, we receive the spirit of God in us. So what our responsibility is, is to go and water that plant back there. So on Monday, you go and water that plant. On Tuesday, where do you go to school? Mount Olive. Mount Olive. You go and water there. Just water. It's okay. That's a plant, okay? And come back, get some more. You want to go or you want to sleep in today? And sleep in. So she's here. Now on Sunday, they come back and the Holy Spirit wants to fill them more. Now she's bored. Okay? She's bored because she didn't do anything throughout the, the week. Now she's bored, she's there. And uh, brother, sometimes, you know, when we have program, you wrote, you're going to sing this song, sometimes the Holy Spirit will change all the program. And he'll mess up, okay? And he just come like, he pour the Holy Spirit water and pour the Holy Spirit there, okay? You know, you come here, do you want some more? Okay, you fill it up. Now they keep on doing that. Going out and coming out. When you come to church, you put yourself, set up to be filled by the Holy Spirit. If you don't use him, then there's no need of coming back because it's just really boring. Pray the name of Jesus. But this is what happens. Now, we can identify this is water, this is water, this is water. Okay? But when she's not paying attention, like you turn around there, play with your phone, and then the devil will come and uh, put something in there. Now when she look around, say, hey, we see like you're this is a little bit greenish. No, 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 it's okay. It's water, it's water. Okay, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. All right? Now, this is water. This is water, but we can see some sign here. There's something wrong. Okay? And if she's not careful, now coming to church becomes like a liability. Doing things of God is no more exciting. But if she's not careful... Her thing will come in, and now we can really tell, like, oh, you know what? But nature has changed. Okay? So tell me, is this water? Can I hear a big amen? Is this water? Yes. Is this water? Yes. Is this water? Yes. Why? Because your eyes can tell the difference. Okay? We don't really know what it is. And I'm telling you, it's very easy to change this to this, but it's very hard to change this to this. Am I right? If you just want to change this, this to look like this, you just pour there. It's very easy for you to lose your Holy Spirit. It's very easy for you to use salvation. Many people say, you know what? I'm going to hang up with this person. I'm going to change them. You are the one to be changed. Pray the name of Jesus. Those are obvious things. Now let me tell you about the Herod Spirit. Herod Spirit, bring that sprite. So do we agree that this is water? This is not. How about this? Now, if you add this in here, okay? Hey, hallelujah. Okay, add something. Okay, now just move, move a little bit. Okay. Now, is this water? Yes. Is this water? But if you were outside there, you did not see. Will you differentiate between this and this? No. You can't differentiate. Hallelujah. Yeah. Give them a hand. <laughs> You're good. You can go back. I want to say this. Herod and spirit want to kill the baby. But it's not obvious. He said, you go find a child, and when you find a child, when you come back, I'll also go and worship. But the intention were not right. Now, here's what happens. 
Most of the time, a herald spirit seeks sympathy. People pretend to be victims. This is happening to me, this happened to me. What happened is, many times we sympathize with those people. We support them. But guess what? Two years later, when Herod did not get those people to come back, what did he do? He ended up killing all kids who were two years and under. Amen? That day, Jerusalem did not sympathize with him. Everybody was like, who is this murderer? But before that, he was a murderer. And I want to encourage you to remember this. You need spiritual eyes to differentiate people between how you see and the spirit that's operating between that, behind that person. Because the people who will cause you to do things that you did not plan, they look good. Actually, they are there for you. Pray the name of Jesus. I've seen many people, many young people, and they just come, hey, do you know this person? I don't know this person. And this person came. I, I had somebody call me one day and say, Pastor Joshua, you know, we have been together for many years. I, I, I know you for 20 years. And I, I, I'm tired. I just want to come to church. Give me one lady. I want to marry a lady from the church. And I was like, do you go to church? No, but you know me. I say, you are God behind me, Satan. Because you don't think things that are concern of God. Pray the name of Jesus. This is how we ended up last week. The next scripture. Jesus one day asked his disciples, who do you think the son of man is? And who, uh, 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 when Jesus came to the region of Caesar's Philip, he asked the disciples saying, who do men say that I am the son of man? I am. So they said, some say you are John the Baptist, some Elijah, and some Jeremiah, and some prophet. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? And now this scripture, Matthew chapter 6, let's read together, 16, 16, 16. Let's read together that. The Bible says this, Simon Peter, let's read together. Simon Peter answered and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him, mm? blessed are you Simon Baljona? For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but the, my Father in heaven. Hallelujah. He said that you had a little water, but God put some more water of the Holy Spirit, and now you can tell that I am the Christ, the Son of the living. Amen. How do you think he felt that day? Man, I got this. Jesus, you guys... I am the most important guy here today. God revealed to me. But check this out. Just down about two lines or three lines. The same chapter. This is what happens. Jesus, from time to Jesus, began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things in the hand, at the hands of elders and chief priests and the teachers of the law. And the, he must be killed on the third day and raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. Now, let's read together what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, 23. The Bible says this. Jesus turned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. The same Peter, one place he's filled with the water, he is blessed. The second, just like two paragraphs down, he allowed the devil to come. And now he say, get behind me, Satan. Now imagine Pastor Joshua telling somebody, get behind me, Satan. My goodness, the prayer room will fill with people praying for Pastor Joshua for wisdom praying for Pastor Job because Pastor Job had lost it. Who, who made you mad, Pastor? You know, the thing is, when you have the Spirit of God, you can see behind the scene. You can tell if this is the Spirit of God and this is not the Spirit of God. And you are not popular when you call out what is not the Spirit of God. But the good thing is, Peter did not get offended. He repented to Jesus and Peter became the great man. Pray the name of Jesus. So this brings me to my point number one for today's sermon. Each one of us Amen. Each one of us is like a vessel with a lid. We choose what fills us. Amen. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Each one of us is like a vessel. I know I wrote it differently. But you choose how and who fills you up. Pray the name of Jesus. In other words, we are all servants of God, but we choose who is our master. The Bible says, choose today whom you shall serve. But as for me and my house, I shall serve the... So tell your friend, you have a lot of power. Amen? You have a lot of? You have a lot of? Tell them you have a lot of? You have a lot of? Don't blame Satan all the time. Because we, we can choose what to allow and what not to. The choice is ours. Now, Bethlehem is a place, and, the, the, and I want to just bring this to home, we're talking about Bethlehem. The Bible says that uh, uh, when these people, when the angels came and appeared to the shepherd in the, in the, in the field, they had a choice to listen and follow what the angel was telling them, or just to sit there and say, you know what, we're not going to leave our flock. Actually, it's too cold back there. Uh, it's too, uh, God will use somebody else. This is what the Bible says about Bethlehem. The Bible says that when the angels had gone away from, from them into heaven, the shepherd began trying to, uh, t- uh, saying to one another, let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see the thing that has happened, which the Lord has made us to know. Uh, So they came in hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby, and he lay in the manger. Pray the name of Jesus. I want to just say this. When they heard about this, I said, no detour. It should be faster. Amen? No detour, but it must be faster. So the point here is, they came, the angel came and saw them in, Beth, uh, in the field. And he told them, today in Bethlehem, there something happened. The Bible says, as soon as the angel left, as soon as the angel left, they said, let's go straight, say straight. Let's go what? Straight. And hurry up in fast and see what God has done. I want to encourage you. It's one thing to see the sign. It's one thing to hear from the angel. But if you don't go fast and straight, you are stuck. Most of us don't do what God has said. We don't get salvation because we take it to us. You are supposed to be going straight to Bethlehem. But I'm going here. I'm going to stop up and see my grandmother. I'm going to stop here. Tell your friend, the star is not waiting for you. Pray the name of Jesus. It means... The the star does not follow your schedule, but you follow the path of the star. So when God says like, hey, there's something, they say, hey, let us go straight, say straight. Hallelujah. So most of the time, we take a detour. I want to do this first when I finish our call. The truth of matter is the star is keeping on going. And I'm speaking here about spiritual things. I'm speaking also about material things. You see, Jesus was born 2,000 years ago. He will never be born again. But there are so many things that God is putting us as pregnant. God is putting on us compassionate. God is putting us entrepreneurship. God is putting on us the ministry and different things. They are like babies in us. And God says that they are somewhere for us to get there, we must go straight and fast. Tell your friends, straight and fast. Hallelujah. So, point number two is, God's will is not the road to nowhere. Geographical area matters. Hallelujah. They didn't just get and say, hey, where are we going? Let's go to, to, uh, let's go to Damascus today. Uh, maybe the child is here. You see, God's address was specific. He said, go to where? To Bethlehem. In matter of fact, the scripture we read, it was written 800 years before Christ. He said, you, Bethlehem, Ephrata, you are not small. Although you are small among Judas, but out of you, hallelujah. You see, your story is not written when you came to America. Your story did not come when you met me. Your story was written before you were created. And God said, you are not small. There is something that will come out of you. 
pray the name of Jesus. But most of the time, what happened is, we say, you know, nothing good can come out of Nazareth. So what I want to do, I think I move, must move to uh, Bethlehem. I mean, uh, to move to, to Nazareth. The truth of matter is, uh, God says, you, Ephra, uh, um, Bethlehem, you are not small. Your story has been written many, many years ago. All what you need to do is to wake up and go straight. Pray the name of Jesus. Tell your friend, no detours. Don't take a detour. Hallelujah. We can all relate to Bethlehem. Tell your friend, we can all relate to Bethlehem. See, this story is very fascinating. <laughs> Let's read here. In Luke chapter 2, 1 to 5, the Bible says, Now in the days of decree, um, days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the censor be taken of all the inhabitants of earth. This was the first censor taken when uh, Quirinus was a governor of Syria. And everyone was on his way to register for the census, each to his own city. Say, his own, say my own city. So if you came from Ankeny, you are a resident of Ankeny. So your registration is in. If you come from West Des Moines, you may have a friend in Ankeny. But you may eat food, but today I must go back to my hometown because I belong. Pray the name of Jesus. A few months ago, I was talking about tribes. And some people get offended. Pastor is talking about something that will divide us. Divide us who are where? The truth of the matter is there's somewhere you belong. Amen? He went back to this city because he belonged there. Now here, I mean, when you read this stuff, it's so fascinating. 800 years, God says through Micah that you, Bethlehem, you are not small. Amen? You are not small. Why? Because a man called Joseph will be born there. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without Joseph... Bethlehem would not be known. Hallelujah. But also look at this. Joseph has no visitation from the angel. The angel appeared to Mary and said, Hey, you highly favored. You are favored than other women on the earth. And our generation will call you blessed. Pray the name of Jesus. I want to talk to my friend Pentecostals here. We don't worship Mary, but you need to respect that woman. Because the Bible says that you'll be blessed. You know, sometimes they go, Mary, you know, the Bible says she is blessed. Is she alive? No. But she is blessed. And she was blessed. So the point here is, um, now see how things worked. Joseph is born, is a resident of Bethlehem. And then the angel appears to Mary and say, hey, you are blessed. And these two people are engaged. Amen. So the day comes for registration. Instead of Mary going to her own place, she comes with her fiancé. Okay? They are coming to Bethlehem. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Bethlehem now is blessed because Mary is coming. <laughs> Hallelujah. They are not blessed because she was born there, but because one of their son has gone out and found, fell in love with a woman who is blessed. So now the city is blessed because the woman who is coming, pray the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And my point here, point number three before I finish, is this. In the story of Christmas, we can learn that we can obtain favor through association. Yes. Hallelujah. We can obtain favor through association. When God spoke to Mary, because Mary was associated with Joseph, and Joseph belongs to the city called Bethlehem, then Bethlehem became great. Praise the name of Jesus. 
but you have to belong somewhere. There are some blessings that will just come if you are a resident of a specific place. You cannot be all over the place. When the blessing are in Enkeni, you become the resident. You change your address. Now I am in Enkeni. When the blessing are in Clive, you are no, you got to belong somewhere. And when you belong to that place, there are some blessings that you just be blessed because you are connected in the right place with the right people, with the right people who are blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. No wonder sometimes you see people are calling all over the place. They want to relate with people who are blessed. But if you relate with people who are not blessed, you are in trouble. You must always remember that Joseph did not hear like, hey, man, you are blessed. But today we talk about Joseph. We talk about Nazareth because of that relationship. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell your friend, you can get it through association. Amen. We don't have all us to carry the baby. Only one person was carrying the baby. The other one was helping. Okay, I need a massage. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What do you want? Da, da, da. Hold my hand. Baby, be turning. Hold my hand. Oh, he said, oh, you don't know. But, but Mary, it's not my fault. Yeah, but Jesus, I mean, God appointed you. So they are working together. I'm telling you, when you labor together, there's some blessing that comes together and bless us in the name of Jesus. When you connect with the right person, there's something that will change in your life because you are belonging to the city of Bethlehem. Ask your friend where you belong. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let me just finish. Now, when the baby was born, only a few people knew about it. Joseph knew about it. Uh, um, Mary knew about it. And, and the shepherd knew about it. But sometimes it was dangerous for them to tell king where the baby was. But after 33 years, Jesus is starting his ministry. Okay? So he comes, he starts calling the disciples, and this is what happened in the book of John chapter 1, 45, 46. Philip, one of the disciples, found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. He found Jesus. You saw the illustration about water. When you have water, you don't keep it yourself. You go and water other people. So he found the light. He went, hey, we have found the one who was spoken in the book of laws and prophets. Come and see him. Pray the name of Jesus. Now this person, Jesus, the prophets took place 800 years before he came. And here is a, just a guy who want proof. Nathaniel. So just what Nathaniel says. He says, And Nathaniel said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? <laughs> 800 years ago, the prophet said something will come from, from, from Bethlehem. And Jesus now moved his headquarters to, to, uh, to, to, to Nazareth where he operated. Now he said, Hey, Come and see. The prophet has come to pass. And he said, can something good come from? You see, when you're about to get to a breakthrough, people who are closer to you, they will say, can something good come from you? Yeah, 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 I understand some people can be doctors, but not you. I understand that some, you know, there are so many things. Can something good come out of Nazareth. And you have to remind yourself the scripture where God spoke to you. And he said, you Nazareth, you Bethlehem, you are not small. Hallelujah. You see, my destiny does not come because I meet with somebody. Nathaniel cannot determine my destiny. And you're going to find so many Nathaniel telling you what you cannot do. But you need to remember that many years ago before God created you, there's something he said. He said, hey, my brother, you are not small because out of you something great will come out. Pray the name of Jesus. So he said, can something good come out of Nazareth? But guess what? 
Philip did not argue with him. This is what he told him. Okay? He said, come and see. Come and see. So it means that for us, we must showcase the good works of God. Hallelujah. Tell your friend you have to showcase the good work of God. Tell your friend you must showcase. You got to showcase the good work of God. Let me tell you something before I finish. There are so many people who show you what the devil is doing. Multitude. Turn CNN. They will tell you what the devil is doing. They will tell you how many people have changed and how have confessed. The pastor today confessed that he, he is no longer, he, 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 he believes in this lifestyle. And they will put their headline. There are so many people telling you what the world wants you to know here. But we are the people to showcase the good works of God. Imani Television will be a place to showcase the good work of God. I believe deep in my spirit, God wants us to showcase what God has done. Because he said, come and see. That means testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Satan can show me, you preach to this person, he gets saved, he backslided. You preach to this person, you united these people in holy matrimony, they're divorced. That's okay. And I know that. But I can show you people who are doing well. Pray the name of Jesus. You can show me people who are not doing good. I can show you people who are doing well. You can show me people who I pray they died. I can show people who I pray they get healed. You can show me people who are frustrated. I can show you people who are happy. The job is for us to showcase the good work of God. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Showcase the good work of God. Can something good come out of Nazareth? About six, eight years, I mean, eight, eight months ago, nine months ago, we came up with this ambitious program. And we said, by December 31st, we are going to be able, we want to believe God together and work hard that we can rotate worship teams in the church. Now, last year, we had only one drama. My son will go places like Cedar Rapid and come back at three o'clock in the morning. And he go to bed and I tell him, just sleep. He said, if I don't come to church, what will happen? So sometimes he'll come here, I'll go find a Red Bull for him because I feel sorry for him, very tired. And we said, you know what? We're going to do this. We we'll say, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But we want to know that you, Imani, you are not small. Amen. 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 You people of Imani, you are not what? Small. Out of you, some great things will happen. And we started that program. And we kept working and working and working. And today, we have like three drummers in the church. Pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Now, guess what? I think on Friday, my son called me. And he said, There's a, there are people who believe in you. You, you remember Kipchoge's story? When Eliud Kipchoge was running, there were people who were there to set pace for him. Okay? They were not competing with him. They were setting pace. When he won, they won. Pray the name of Jesus. You know, don't allow people who want to compete with you when you are running. Because they will make you your life hard. But these people were there. So there are some churches around here who feel good about us. Amen? They, they, they send their, their pastors to come. Hey, pastor, I was sent by my body just to come check. How are you doing? I want to just pray with you. Now, I don't really have this problem. No, I tell them God is doing this. God is doing this. God is doing this. Because I have to showcase. Come and see what God is doing. Amen. That's my philosophy. I don't come here. We don't have light. And we don't have this. No, no, we don't do that. Come and see what God is doing. And when they see God, what God is doing, they want to partner with God. Who in the world would, would not like to partner with God? Amen. Show him what God is doing. They will come. Yes. Amen. Don't cry. Tell your friend, don't, don't cry. Like, you know, this country, oh, life is so hard. You know, we work and work. And the money is not there. Okay, go home. No, I don't want to go. There's diseases there. Okay, why are you here? Keep on working. Pray the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank God for the job that God gave you. Amen. Don't just show like, oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Life is tough. No. Why should I follow you if you are dying? I don't want to die. 
Amen? Amen. Hey, if you are going nowhere and you want me to follow you, I'm not going nowhere. You have to show me where you're going. Even when you don't know everything, you just believe God. You know what? I am going in this direction. If God has told me, I don't know, but God can make a way. And that's why you start leading, re, re, uh, uh, singing those songs. Okay. When my back was against the wall, you made a way. So God will make a way where seems to be no way. You fill your mind with the things of God. And you start walking and walking. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. So my son told me that this church, they have a Christmas Eve service on Tuesday. And they don't have a drama at all. They have been calling me. They even want to offer me money. They want to give me a ride. They want Jabez to come. What should I do? I said, we have a lineup. Why don't you train one person here? Let them take care of here. And I want to export the blessing of Imani and go bless that church. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we, can anything come out of Nazareth? Say, yes, it can. Pray the name of Jesus. We are coming from receiving to sending. Hallelujah. Because the greatness of Bethlehem is not about geographical. It's because Jesus was born there. And the greatness of my life is not about what I know. It's because Jesus lives in me. The greatness of Imani is not on what we can do, but it's because Jesus is with us. When we said like we are going to have multiple teams, God backs that up, the angels come, somebody is praying, and the angels are helping him to play, and all the sad things are coordinating in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah! The Bible says, when the angel appeared, and gave them the, the, the good news about Jesus. They saw the host of angels worshipping God. You know, wherever you are, when you are doing the business of God, there is a host of angels. They are not visible by naked eyes, but they are there worshipping God. Whatever you choose to do, the angels are surrounding you, and they are there to help you go where you cannot go. So my vision is, next year we're going to export more. We can have all three drummers sitting here while other people are needing it. So we are no longer small. Amen? Amen? Out of us, things are happening. And I want to encourage you, if you are not on board, get in board. 2020 is a year of completion. I don't know whoever pastor will say up there, I don't know, I am not responsible. I'm responsible for what is happening. Last week I told you about sign. And I went home and I was sleeping on my couch on Monday. And I get a phone call from Texas. I pick the phone call and this pastor has been here before. And he said, hey, Pastor Joshua, I want you to appreciate you and your church. You people are doing great. He said, I'm doing evangelist meeting for one month here in Texas. And wherever I go, I talk about you. I talk about your wife. I talk about children. I talk about the church. <laughs> Pray the name of Jesus. Because we are Bethlehem. Yes. We are not small. Yes. Tell your friend, we are not small. Yes. And he tells me. So when I was talking about sign last week, I saw a picture of 2020. Now for those who have eye problems like me, you know that a perfect vision is what? 2020. If you have like a 1520, you have to have something like this. If you remove this, I, I can't read. So God told me 2020 will be a year of completion. Everything you guys have been praying for and thinking they are going to come. Everything is to a full circle. So this guy called me and said, I want you to appreciate and let you know we talk about you with our people. And then he says, let, let me pray with you. So I, I cannot refuse a prayer. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't refuse prayers. Especially for people that I know that they're men of God. So he said, praying. And he said, Pastor Joshua, I see a picture of a car. And this car, the hood is open. And the angel of God is connecting wires. And he said, 2020 will be a year of completion. Things that your church has been praying for are coming to pass 2020. Things that your people have been praying for, they are coming to pass 2020. And then he says, hallelujah. This is what he said. Get ready. Hallelujah. Get what? Sometimes when you are not ready, the baby will not come. Pray the name of Jesus. So sometimes I'm very, I'm very serious. I don't want to keep on wasting time. I teach you something tomorrow. I keep teaching you. No, I, I cannot do that. 
Because I have a bigger mandate coming. Our church is going global 2020. Pray the name of Jesus. We are going to impact not only people in Des Moines. We are going to impact people globally. How is it going to happen? I don't worry because it's not my business. But my business is to be ready. So what we are going to do? Train other people to preach in the church. What we are going to do? Train people in the media. And everything must go because God is saying prepare yourself because 2020 will be the year. I don't know about you. I believe what God is speaking to the church is also speaking to this tribe of Wimani. You need to belong. Tell your friend you need to belong. Ask them, can you be counted? <laughs> can you be counted? You know, it will be a dangerous thing when Joseph is going to Bethlehem. Hey, 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 hey. I'm Joseph. We don't see your name. Who is your father? I'm Joseph. Where have you been? I don't know. I am Joseph. You must go somewhere and say, hey, Joseph, welcome. We know you because you belong there. For there's a blessing of Bethlehem that will just come when you are connected. Those who are watching me online, it's good to watch me online, but I want you to connect with your local church because there are some blessings that are coming here. They cannot come to you. But when you connect to that anointing with your pastor, there are some angels that have dispatched you at church. And when they come, you'll be blessed because your pastor also is blessed. Pray the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So the way to Bethlehem must be straight and fast. Straight and fast. Tell your friend, stop corner. Stop corners. Do what to do to us. Today you are here. And, and I'm going to, but I have to, I have to pick a fruit. I, you know, I have to carry up my snack. You know, I got to get a snack, pastor. You know, it's long. I got to get a snack. You see, when you come, the, the star is gone. Now you lose your destiny because of a fruit. Pray the name of Jesus. May the Lord help us. Now let's just stand on our feet and read this as we finish here. Conclude. Just stand on our feet. Let's just finish this one here. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9. This is a story of our Apostle Paul. Now the Bible says Apostle Paul had a thorn in the flesh. We don't know. Some people say he may have no wife. Maybe that was a thorn. Maybe he had a certain alignment. We don't know exactly. But he said he had a thorn in the flesh. And he said multiple times I prayed to God that he may remove that thorn of the flesh. And this is what the God said. Each time, let's read together. Each time he said, my grace is all you need. My power works best in the weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that my power of Christ can work through me. Pray the name of Jesus. This is what it means. If you can figure thing to everything out, then God cannot be glorified. Amen? If Jesus was born in Jerusalem, five-star hotel, hallelujah, everything, oh, yeah, 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 he, he is the son of one rich guy, but he was born in the manger. He survived there. Okay, he became Jesus. So when we talk about that, is when we are made strong. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. The truth of matter is, when you are weak and you do something big, then people glorify God. They say, this guy just came the other day. Now he owned the shop. He owned this business. How did you do this? You say, you know what? Come and see my Jesus. Hallelujah. But most of the time, when you start a coffee shop, your people will say, can anything come from there? How, how did you mix it? How did you mix it? What did you do? When they go to Starbucks, they just say, hey, I want an espresso. Shh. They don't even know how it's made. You get your espresso, you pay. But when they come to you, how did you mix? How did you mix? In other way, can anything come, good come from you? Did you wash your hands? Okay. I'm going to teach you here. Oh, in our church, eh, do you speak English? Can something really come out of there? Oh, 
I don't want to take my children there. There's no youth program. Youth program. Oh. <laughs> Can anything good come out of here? And that's why I feel so good to broadcast when I see preteens playing here so that they can know that something good, hallelujah, something good can come out of here. I have one mission in my life. My mission is to prove they're wrong. I'll still preach because my mission is that my weakness, God is made strong when I am weak. Yes. Praise the name of Jesus. Tell your friend, rejoice in your weakness. For those who are not born here, I have, have, I have opportunity to, to work with my teenagers on sound booth. Medley. Or oh, melody. No, medley. 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 They speak good English. Medley. 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 And I'm like, Me medley. Okay. Medley. 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 Yeah, that's good. It's good for you. But you have to understand, even if I say medley, still people are coming. Because in my weakness, God is made strong. I don't have to change my accent to make you happy. I'll just be who I am. Because in my weakness, pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Tell your friend, your weakness is an asset. Some of you girls, you go find some creams. I don't know what to use. Your back is black. Here, you are like a white man. You are just trying to, to, to bleach. Oh, you call bleaching. You are bleaching yourself to make you look different. You don't know that there are some people who are looking at somebody who is dark as a charcoal. They just feel good taking picture with somebody who's dark as charcoal. And you are bleaching yourself? Pray the name of Jesus. Tell your friend, in my weakness, God is made strong. Hallelujah. Pray the name of Jesus. Pray the name of Jesus. Tell your friend, straight and fast. Amen. Whatever God is asking to do, do it straight and fast. Father, we thank you for this morning. You are amazing, God. And we pray that you help us to go straight and fast in the name of Jesus. Help us to associate with Bethlehem in the name of Jesus. Help us to know where we belong in the name of Jesus. I thank you for what you are doing because in our weakness, you are made strong. Help us to rejoice for who we are and not to change to become like somebody else. We bless you, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we believe and pray. And everybody say amen. Say amen. And we have clapped to Jesus.